Live text access, training for real-time intralingual subtitlers. Unit 6, Velotype. Element 1, Psychocognitive Skills. Activate exit strategies if the speaker is challenging. The introduction to this unit has already explained what velotyping is and the introduction to this element has already explained what are the psychocognitive skills a velotypist must possess. This video lecture is aimed at letting you know about the strategies a velotypist applies when he or she realizes the speaker is challenging. To do so, I will define the challenging speaker to then move to the strategies that a velotypist tries to apply when having to deal with specific challenges like a fast speech, incomprehensible speech, a low volume speech, an impromptu speech and plays on words. This is the agenda of this presentation. Section 1. The Challenging Speaker as you have seen, a velotypist has to do many things at the same time. In this element, we will deal with the psychocognitive skill of activating exit strategies while velotyping if you realize the speaker is challenging. In particular, for a velotypist to be able and become a professional in the field, he or she has also to apply solutions to problems he or she may encounter when subtitling, due to the fact that he or she is no longer capable of providing the service as required. While you can only develop these competences by the time and thanks to ad hoc exercises, you may be interested in understanding the rationale behind it all. To do this, we will see what a challenging speaker is. For every challenge, I will try to provide concrete solutions. So, what does it mean? A speaker is challenging. There are many situations where I found myself trying to subtitle a speech I found hard to subtitle. Here we will see five situations which may cause you trouble when subtitling a speech in real time. For sure, a speaker is challenging when he or she speaks above your Mars, or your capacity to produce text as rapidly and accurately as needed. However, a fast speaker can be less challenging than a speaker whose utterances are incomprehensible for some reason, or pronounced far from the mic, or at a low volume. These are the worst to me. Some colleagues also find it difficult to subtitle speakers who have not planned their speech beforehand, and speakers who keep using plays on words. Here are some examples of challenging speakers. Section 2. Fast Speech When trying to subtitle people speaking very fast, there are three types of problems. One is that you are not capable of producing accurate text at the same speed. A second problem is that you cannot memorize or even understand what quick speakers say. Last but not least, even if you were capable of keeping the same pace as the speaker, your audience would have problems reading your subtitles at the same speed, especially if subtitles are visible as two-liner subtitles. So, what shall we do when a speaker speaks too fast? Let's consider this example, taken from the opening of the famous address delivered by Martin Luther King in 1963 at the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. Let's read it. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. 
five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. Now, let's pretend we are subtitling Dr. King's speech in real time and that we were not given the text of the speech beforehand. If we had the script of the speech, we could feed the software with this or train ourselves with it. But we cannot. Let's also pretend he is very stressed and starts speaking very quickly. What can we do? In this case, one solution may be the Gordian knot strategy or cut and knit. It means that you can subtitle only half of the sentences pronounced by the speaker while trying to keep coherence. In this example, you can avoid typing every other sentence and still provide understandable subtitles with little or no cohesion effort. Let's read the text as a result of this strategy and we will see it keeps saying more or less the same thing. I am happy to join with you today. Five score years ago, a great American signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great, great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity. Of course, this is not always easy, and sometimes doing this may cause even some troubles. Let's consider the same example and apply the Gordian knot strategy in a different manner. Let's read the text as a result of a badly applied Gordian knot strategy. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. We can see that this creates some inconsistencies. Given that the sentence with the reference to Abraham Lincoln having signed an Emancipation Proclamation is left out. This creates a huge cohesion problem because the following sentences all refer to it. Are we still capable of guessing what he means by Negro slaves? Are the subtitles referring to the same people the speaker is referring to? And what does the hundred years later phrase refer to? When you are not confident going for the guardian knot, prefer the Garwood strategy. When in doubt, leave it out. You leave out an entire chunk and start from the first sentence you think it makes sense to restart from. In this case, it is the last sentence without the reference to that something you are not able to subtitle, which happened 100 years before. The final result is the following. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. The Negro is still not free. This is an extreme solution and the audience realizes that subtitles do not read what is said by the speaker. This is not a problem if it is rarely adopted and you, can, you are capable of explaining the reason. Section 2. Incomprehensible speech. Do you remember Charlie Chaplin in The Great Dictator? There, Dictator Hinkle speaks fake German to the people of Tomania, who applaud him. 
When we type it, it may happen that we, as real-time subtitlers, find ourselves in situations where we don't understand a sentence or more sentences that the speaker pronounces while it seems that his or her audience does, as in this famous scene. In such cases, you can adopt the generalization strategy. If you know the topic and the context, and you more or less know what he or she is saying, you can either relate the last concept you have understood by either reformulating it or saying something that does not commit yourself too much, like something general or logical. Let's consider some examples. Let's consider the same example as above. Here you stop understanding the speaker when he says, this momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. What can you do? You can try to keep providing the subtitling service by reformulating the last concept you have understood, meaning five score years ago, a great American, in whose symbolic shadow we stand today, signed the Emancipation Proclamation. Here is the result. The sentence is replaced by the reformulation of the last subtitled sentence. The Emancipation Proclamation signed 100 years ago by such a great American is the symbol of us all today. It may sound a bit redundant, but this is an inspirational speech with an important use of rhetoric. This strategy is not to be confused with cheating. Here you don't lie. On the contrary, you keep providing correct information and consequently the audience keeps relying on the subtitles because they keep seeing them under the speaker's mouth. If you understand the overall message the speaker wants to deliver thanks to context, body language or from slides he or she uses, you can replace the missing bits with logical consequences or general statements without jeopardizing understanding of the source text or cheating with fake information. The final result is, this was a fundamental step in our history that made this gathering possible. You have replaced the incomprehensible sentence with a general statement, which is also a logical continuation of the previous sentence. When you are not confident going for the generalization strategy, again, prefer the Garwood strategy. When in doubt, leave it out. Remember, this is an extreme solution and the audience realizes that subtitles do not read what is said by the speaker. Section four, low volume. There are some speakers like Marlon Brando's Don Corleone in The Godfather who mumble or speak with such a low volume that the problem is not that you don't understand them. With little effort you do. The problem is when you try to type, your concentration is on the typing correctly. Moreover, the extra effort involved in understanding the speaker reduces your capacity to type. So what can you do in such cases? If the speaker speaks out of the mic or with a low volume, there is little we can do. You can ask the speaker to speak closer to the mic or louder, if you are physically close to him or her. However, sometimes it happens that the speaker used to do the speaking with a low volume or not care caring about the microphone. He or she will not manage to behave for long. In such cases, you can only adopt the Gordian knot strategy or cut and knit. As seen previously, the Gordian knot consists hearing a sentence and repeating it as fast as possible once it is over. By compressing it if you can. Then you can skip the following sentence and concentrate on the third sentence of the row, which you are going to repeat as quickly as possible once it is over 
by paying attention to cohesion and coherence. As in case of a fast speaker, this is something that you cannot do for long. Section 5. Impromptu speech. There is a huge debate among scholars and among professionals about whether one can subtitle all features of orality. Somebody says yes, because one must be faithful to what the speaker actually says. Somebody says no, because readability and understandability is more important. Especially when it comes to a politician, the question of reproducing one's bad grammar or mistakes is all the more important. It has to do with being fair with the opposition or diplomatic with the speaker. Though an answer is difficult to provide because both parties, to me, have their point, let me now concentrate on how to deal with features of orality. They jeopardize both your understanding as a real-time subtitler and that of the audience reading verbatim subtitles. So what can you do? Though we always have to understand which strategy is better to use, verbatim or sensatum, an impromptu speech is an obstacle to the subtitling process, especially in the case velotyping is used as a, sub as a subtitling tool because it is sometimes a challenge to type non-existing words, like those speakers, especially foreigners, may produce as a result of calcus from their native language or as a result of mispronunciations. So how to cope with impromptu speech? If it is a challenge to the subtitling process, you can go for correcting one's bad grammar or go straight to the point. If it is not relevant at all that the speaker makes mistakes because he or she is a non-native speaking English as a communication tool, no matter if he or she doesn't pronounce words properly, selects words wrongly, or mumbles, hesitates, self-reformulates, or produces extra sounds, etc. What is important in a conference speech is the main message. If you manage to understand what he or she says and recognize pronunciation, grammar, and lexical mistakes due to the speaker's native language, you can go and correct his or her output preferably with short sentences. Given that foreigners tend to speak slowly compared to native speakers, the strategy is to wait for a complete sentence and then continue typing. The delay should be enough to let you produce correct sentences. Don't try to follow the pace of the speaker, because you might have to go back and retype parts of what was said. Concretely, let's consider this concrete example taken from the transcription of a speech made by an Italian politician famous for not being an excellent speaker of English. Uh, professor, you know my, my personal position is, is that Italy's debt is too high, too, too, too much big. We in this moment, the, the level of debt is 133%. For the first time in 2015, we stopped the growth, but the problem is the relation between GDP and the debt, because in the last three years with the resection, the GDP was the, our first problem. The speaker is challenging, especially if you don't guess what is the meaning the speaker wants to deliver. However, truncating what this speaker says into smaller chunks is quite easy, because grammar is simple. Now let's consider the example we have just seen. Mr. Renzi, who speaks here, is a challenging speaker. However, truncating what he says into smaller chunks is quite easy, because Mr. Renzi, like many foreigners, uses a simple grammar. A possible result, trying to keep as much of the original as possible, and producing short sentences could be Professor, my personal position is the following. Italy's debt is too high, too much. In this moment, 
the level of, of debt is 133%. For the first time in 2015, we stopped its growth. But the problem is the relation between GDP and debt. In the last three years during the recession, the GDP was our first problem. Okay. Remember that this manipulation of the source text is only possible at the grammar level, not at the content level. Otherwise, this may cause differences between those who hear the speaker and those who read the subtitles. Also consider that somebody having heard what the speaker says may contradict him or her or correct him or her. Section 6 Plays on words. Plays on words are really terrible to type for many reasons, especially if you have to subtitle them live. In the movie Pulp Fiction, Uma Thurman tells a joke to John Travolta, which says, Three tomatoes are walking down the street Papa tomato, Mama tomato, and Baby tomato. Baby Tomato starts lagging behind. Papa Tomato gets really angry, goes back and squishes him and says, Catch up! I don't want to know how much time it took to those who had to sub subtitle this into other language or if they managed to do it. But even intralingually, this is not an easy task, because the joke is based on two homophones, the ver verb catch up a synonym to speed up, and the noun ketchup, the tomato-based sauce. When it is a play involving a non-standard spelling, we normally type the word in uppercase letters as a signal to the audience that that is the word or group of words where they have to focus their attention, as it is the funny part of the joke. Some colleagues use inverted commas, some others put an exclamation mark after the wordplay. Some others the caption laughter. What do we do in this case when a homophone is used to provoke the laughter in this case? One solution can be that of spelling the non-standard homophone, the unexpected one. In this case we use ellipsis as a suspense technique and then uppercase letters to say that they have to concentrate on the word ketchup, which is the unexpected laughter-provoking synonym to catch up or speed up. Summary In this video lecture, we have seen some concrete examples of how to behave when a speaker is challenging. When a speaker is challenging, we need to adopt what we call here exit strategies meaning strategies to apply to exit a potentially dangerous situation for either the subtitler, the audience, or both. In case, of a fast, in case of a fast speaker, the mostly used technique is the Gordian knot, or cut and knit strategy, meaning trying to reduce the speed by omitting whole chunks and then managing to make the non-omitted parts coherent among them. An extreme solution is the Garwood strategy, meaning leave everything out and explain why you did so. The Garwood strategy is also an extreme strategy for incomprehensible speeches, though replacing incomprehensible bits with general or logical bits is to be preferred if possible. When a speaker speaks with a low volume, the Gordian knot is again the best solution. When a speaker makes an impromptu speech, with many mistakes and features of orality, the strategy is to skip them and try to produce short and correct sentences. Finally, when it comes to plays of words, the best solution is to type the laughter-provoking, unexpected word in uppercase characters. Exercises. Exercises. The exercises for this video lecture are in the trainer's guide and the PowerPoint file.
LTA, Live Text Access, Universiteit Autonoma de Barcelona, SDI, Internationale Hochschule, Scuola Superiore per Mediatori Linguistici, ZDF, Digital, European Federation of Hard of Hearing People, FO, Velotype, Sub-T Access, European Certification and Qualification Association, ECQA. Co-funded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union. Erasmus Plus project 2018-1-DE01-KA203-004210. The information and views set on this presentation are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the official opinion of the European Union. Neither the European Union institutions and bodies, nor any person acting on their behalf, may be held responsible for the use which may be made of the information contained here.